we've been talking um, in the past uh, past few services about uh, various things, but uh, one of the things that he's been uh, speaking to us is, has to do with discipline. The spiritual disciplines as sons of God, as people of his kingdom. And disciplines of reading and studying the word, disciplines of prayer, fasting or consecration, discipline of our speech, our attitudes, just the disciplines that comes with a a runner that's striving for masteries. We talked about that in Timothy. And he said that uh, he reminded us through the word that no one running for a crown or striving uh, will uh, obtain it unless they strive according to the rules. So we know that, uh, and Paul was telling Timothy, just, just consider, ponder, meditate on what I'm telling you. Let the Lord give you further insight or understanding of what I'm saying. And um, so God is concerned that we understand the times that we're living in, understand uh, the importance of discipline, understand the, um, just the dynamics of the kingdom. And... Um, just reminding me of certain things. I was just going back through the word of God, how the Bible is full of examples of those that discipline themselves through prayer and uh, to be in contact with heaven and God and, and to intercede for others and so one thing that doesn't grow old is that very truth so I was reminded of Abraham how his whole attitude God called him out of Ur of the Chaldeans and he began to get to know God and somehow or another even the heathen practiced certain uh, uh, things when it comes to you know uh, exercising, uh, being in touch with an idol or whatever. But Abraham was called out of the Chaldeans and Ur, and um, but Abraham had a an attitude about himself that we can copy. And I'm going to just briefly take you through of two or three scriptures here in Genesis 13. Verse 1 says, And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Beersheba, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. Verse 4 says, Unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. You know the story, Abraham. Abraham. Looking at some of the things that he did. Now look at verse 18 in chapter 13. Verse 14 says, And the Lord said to Abram, after that lot was separated from him, Lift up now your eyes and look <coughs> from the place where you, thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. <coughs> for all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it, why I will give it to thee. Then Abram removed his tent and came and dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built there an altar to the Lord. I want you to look at the habit that Abraham had in this. And then uh, we go down to Genesis 26.
Genesis 26. Verse 23, and, and he went, verse 23, and he went up from thence to Beersheba. And the Lord appeared to him the same night and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. Their Isaac's servants dig the well. So this was Isaac. But following after his father's footstep, building an altar. It's going down here in chapters 33. We see not only Abraham, but Isaac keeping the pattern. But then we look at Jacob in chapter 33. Jacob came to Shalem, a city of Shechem which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Padanaram and pitched his tent there, pitched his tent before the city, and he brought a parcel of a field where he had spread his tent at the hand of the children of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred pieces of silver. And he erected there an altar and called it El Elohi Israel. So you see the pattern there, building an altar. To call upon the name of the Lord. He built an altar. Okay, we go on. Second Chronicles. Very famous passage of scripture here. Second Chronicles 7. The Bible says, verse 12, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. God made a promise to Solomon and couldn't turn it to people. And we see Moses the great intercessor interceding for Israel falling on his face time and time again that God would be able to minister to his people the thing that he wanted to do. So many times Moses was interceding, standing in the gap. Sometime Israel sinned and, and God wanted to was about to deal with Israel because of their sin. And so God, uh, Moses would fall on his face and talk to God on a regular basis. He was an intercessor. God had made him an intercessor uh, for that purpose and a leader. And then we go on, <clears throat> as we go on through, we look at the word of God even more closely. We look at 1 Samuel chapter 1. We see Hannah. We see Hannah. And the Bible says, verse 9, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten. She was one um, that could not have children at that point. Rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon the, a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. She was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept so. She vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid but will give to thine handmaid a man child. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. There shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord, and Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, on her lips moved. But her voice was not heard, and therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. Eli said to her, How long would thou be 
drunken. Put away thy wine from thee. Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I've drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine hand made for a daughter of Belial, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. And she said, Let thine hand, she said, Let thine hand made find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad. There was prayer, there was intercession, there was talking to God. There's the discipline of prayer, and prayer is, is, is very important to keep us from losing it, keeping us from saying or doing things that we wouldn't do otherwise. When we find ourselves running short of strength, God gives strength. He gives grace to help us. And there's an altar and a throne of grace to help us. And God was making me see the importance of the spiritual, the disciplines of prayer and the word of God. And it helps us to discipline our speech. Then we look at uh, Daniel. Chapter 10, we'll go there. See the importance of prayer. Daniel chapter 10, we find him. The Bible says in verse 1, in the year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time upon it was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hiddekel. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, his arms and his feet like, a, like in color to polished brass. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Now Daniel alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quaking fell upon them. So that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone. And saw this great vision. And there remained no strength in me. For my comeliness was turned in me into corruption. And I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me up upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. And I am come for thy words. Listen to this. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia with Stood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. And so he began to unfold to him the things that God had given 
The point that I wanted to, you to see is that Daniel began to pray. And immediately God heard his prayer. And he sent an angel with a message right away. But there was the prince of Persia that intercepted him so that he could not bring the answer to Daniel. So Daniel was praying and on some form of a consecration for three weeks. And so after he continued praying, God was able to send Michael to help him. It is very important to understand the spiritual. There are spiritual forces that will do what they can to stop you and I. None of us are exempted. We live in a kingdom. We live in the kingdom of light, but there is a kingdom of darkness who opposes all that God is and what he's about. If we can grasp this and operate with this understanding and cooperate with the spirit of God, we all can reach our goal. We do not want to be ignorant of the unseen world. It's real. And even in the Old Testament, God made it clear that there are forces in the heavenlies that would come to preempt, to interfere with what God wants to do. There's no difference. This is still the same way. And then um, the Bible, when Jesus was here on earth, he had these things to say when he was teaching his disciples how not to give up. He knew that they would face invisible foes and obstacles that they could be discouraged. But here's what he said. Chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable to them to this end. Chapter 18. Luke. I'm sorry. Luke 18. And he spake a parable to them to this end that men ought always to pray and not faint or not lose heart. Saying there it was in a city a judge which feared not God neither regarded man. There was a widow in that city and she came to him saying avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But after what he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, neither yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night to him, though he bear long with him? I tell you, that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith in the earth. Will the heart be so weary of the way things are happening till they give up praying altogether? Will they still believe in God? Will they still be faithful? Will they still have faith in their souls? That God still answers prayer. Something to think about. Jesus spoke this parable so that his disciples could understand certain things. And to the intent that, yes, you will get weary sometime. But there's something you must understand when you get weary that you can do. Always pray. Always pray. And not lose heart. He spoke those things to his disciples. It was necessary. The disciples were going to need that. Remember Paul said, uh, when I was in Asia, he said, uh, 
we were pressed out of measure above strength so much so that we despaired even of life. We had the sentence of death within ourselves and he said, but God wanted us to understand that we would not trust in ourselves but in God. There is a throne and there is grace. There is help that comes from God. There is help. Just understanding that and we govern ourselves accordingly. The Bible is clear. Acts chapter 6. Just want you to see these are just a very few of the many scriptures that has to do with spiritual disciplines of prayer and the word of God. But hopefully they'll be sufficient enough that we will be convinced to do the right thing. Acts 6. Verse 1, and in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples to them and says, It's not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The, the, the apostles understood that there had to be some interceding for the work of God to be fruitful. All right? Jesus prayed. If you read in Luke, you'll see uh, one time Jesus rose up a long while before day, maybe two or three, three o'clock in the morning, prayed to daylight. Another time, he prayed all night long. Jesus prayed. He understood something. He understood something that he wants us to understand. The kingdom of God comes by prayer. Are you hearing me? The kingdom comes. The kingdom's power comes through prayer. Paul told the church at Philippi, that their prayers and the supply that comes from the Spirit. That's what he said. I'm going to be okay basically through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit of God. I'm going to be okay because God answers prayer, right? God answers prayer. So we don't, we're in that day and time where the spiritual forces are, are, are mad because now we, we're moving into a greater dimension of spiritual discipline as a church began to pray and fast with our praying. And so I just want you to be alert. And God wants us to be alert that you're moving into a ram and a dimension that frustrates evil. And so they want to counterattack, but we must be aware, isn't that right? And be equipped and ready for battle because we, we, we don't enter into this thing lightly. Somebody, and I always say, and I want to encourage you, when you move, begin to move into fasting and prayer, just be ready. Don't move into it and then back up. That, that, that doesn't make sense. When you move into it, you must stay in it. Talked with a man, man of God one time. He led the people into prayer. They began to pray profusely. And then uh, when their evil attacks began to come, the, uh, it frightened them and they backed off. But that's not what we're called to do. We must have strength and fortitude. God gives us strength. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Isn't that right? Amen. So I just want to encourage you. Be alert. Uh, 
God is, God is, God is moving at this hour. And, 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 and uh, his adversary is moving to try and interfere with everything that God is doing. But you and I must be alert. God is still moving. And he will do what he said. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember, God said this to me, and he, he's, he's constantly, there's something God is really wanting to get through to us as a people, and he started with the prophetic intercessors, or the, no later than Wednesday night, I was in prayer, we were here at prayer, and then I uh, began to just uh, open myself, talking to the Lord, said, God, I opened myself for you to begin to talk more, and God said, begin to say, it takes discipline to come into this prophetic intercession, it takes discipline. It's got to be a discipline. You know, you, you look at the life of the prophets in the Old Testament. You could hardly find them. They were in the presence of God. And then they come out upon assignments. Prophets. So I, I, I don't know all the detail, but I remember talking to the Lord about the People, I said, God, you got so many prophets. What's, what's, what's the? And then he started talking to me some things that was necessary. But on Wednesday night, he said, Discipline come, well, to, it takes discipline to come into the prophetic uh, intercession. It takes discipline. Then he said, Prophets are to carry influence. And then he began to talk about the people, those in the book of Ag Ag Agabus, Simeon, and Niger. The very nature of the prophetic makes us people of influence. He, I believe God said it like this, Nigel and Simeon. He said, chief men among the brethren. But then he said, He said, that's why there's frustration in the life of people that are undisciplined. Prophets. So he's calling prophets. We, we must understand this and spend the time before God. It's okay to ride along the car and talk to God. It's okay while you're working to talk to God. But then there is a separated time that must not be avoided time when you know I often look at it like this my wife and I we talk all the time that we're together isn't that right but what means more to my wife when on a Friday night I say honey this Friday night is for you and I I lay aside the work I lay aside the business and the tone of my intercession or the tone of my uh, uh, talk with her is a different tone. Are y'all hearing me? And she appreciates that more than the fact that we work together, we talk all the time. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Some people say, oh, I talk to God all the time. That's good. But there is an intimate time that we need with God. And God appreciates that. Take time with God. Take time with God. It's important, saints. And then he said, sometimes we hit and miss when we don't carry that discipline. There are familiar spirits, other kinds of spirits that like to feed on the flesh. So we have to be careful. We have to really know and understand what we're all about and to walk with God. Keep that spiritual discipline, discipline. Hallelujah. You take a runner. You know, you, you, you look at the Olympic players and the people that are training for the Olympics. Just, just take a clip from these people. I mean, you, you, you look at their daily routine. You say, good Lord, does it take all that? Discipline. Right? Discipline. They know. They know they can't get there. The runners... They know that I've got to be in shape. I remember going for the basketball team the first time I tried out for it. I quit. 
just on mere lack of exercise. I wasn't in shape. Came there, got ready, and the coach, I thought, thought he was going to let us play some ball. And the coach took, we, he put us on a two or three mile run. I thought, oh my God, I can't run this. And the guys were running, they were just passing me. I couldn't hang. The disciplines. Now, you, you, you can't, it's like you say, you, you, yeah, you want to play basketball, but you got to understand something. When you run up and down that court for an hour or two, you're going to have to be in shape, buddy. I don't care how good you think you are with this ball. You run up and down that court a few times, you, oh, I can't make it. Why? Because you're not disciplined. Yo, y'all got to hear what I'm saying. Takes discipline everything you do. Now, ain't that right? Why should we look at the things of God and say, you don't have to do this, you don't have to do that? Why should we look at it like that? Everything in this world requires discipline if people are going to do and be anything in this world. And the things of God should not be treated so lightly. I'll tell you something. There's an adversary. And all of his imps, they're very, 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 very committed. And if you don't know that, you're no match for the kingdom of darkness. God wants us to be alert now and understand these things. We're in a kingdom that cannot be overthrown, right? And so as I was thinking what he's saying to us, I hear the Lord striving to bring us into that thing. He said, the time is now. I'm moving by my power but I still need people in place. I still need people, hallelujah, hallelujah. I find that if I discipline myself in prayer and in the word of God, it helps me to discipline my speech. It helps me. Because if I, and when I find myself fasting, it, it moves over into another area and helps me discipline another area of my life. It is important that we discipline ourselves if we're going to do anything for God. We all have desires, isn't that right? That we don't just get there because we have desires. Paul told Timothy, consider it, Timothy, what I say. The husband that labor must be first partaker of the fruits. Oh, hard-working farmer. Yeah. He must be a partaker. He had to learn to wait. Isn't that right? He plants, he waters, he sows. Then there's a season of weeding. Why? Because he can't make it grow. He's done his part, but he can't make it grow. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. God gives the increase. God gives the increase. One sow, one plant, Paul said, and another water, but God gives the increase. So we got to wait after we've done what we're supposed to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's why these, these people like David in the Bible, he understood something about God, and he understood that God will cause you to wait. So he wanted to pass on to us in the book of Psalm, wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He'll strengthen your heart. And after he did that in the 14th verse, he turned around and says, wait, I say, on the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Learn something about the Lord. He's coming. He always comes. But he don't want people to lose heart before he comes, right? Ah, glory to God. God, when you say you're going to do this, and God, God, why you ain't, and God, what? God says, I'm going to do exactly what I said. But I need you to wait. 
Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Hallelujah. And he'll strengthen your heart. Hallelujah. Lift up your head. Lift up your hands and glorify the master. Don't be droopy do. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Glorify your maker. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That only glorifies the devil. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah. They that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. All your adversary want to do is discourage you. But I'm telling you, don't you be discouraged. Don't you dare, for God is on your side. God is on your side. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. He is faithful, that promise. I'm talking to somebody here. Don't you dare be discouraged. Lift up your heads and glorify God. For he's always worthy to be praised. David said, I've been young and now I'm old. Seen a lot of stuff in this world. But he said, there's one thing I've never seen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Lift up your hands and glorify the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let the devil who I'm running this race by the grace and power of our Lord. He's faithful. I remember old man Job. The devil tried to get him to, to throw in the tower. Smote him. Balls. Flesh falling from his bone. Worms in his flesh. Just a miserable mess. Then he said, those worms destroy this body. Yet in my flesh, I shall see God. I know that my redeemer liveth. And I shall still stand in the latter days on the earth. Hallelujah. 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 Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. God commends us when we stand, when it looks bad. Hallelujah. Stay the course. Nothing but discouraged demons try to discourage you. Don't be discouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are two kingdoms. There is a kingdom of darkness and there is a kingdom of light. Walk in the spirit. See what God is doing. Isn't that right? In the spirit realm. You see the activities in the spirit realm, your heart will leap for joy. Somebody say, well, what are you talking about? You remember Elisha? The servant was scared to death, but the, the army was approaching. And then he was, you know, he was, they were scared. Oh, my Lord, what are we going to do? Oh, God, I'm scared to death. And Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes. Let him see in the spirit realm. God opened his eyes, and he looked, and the mountains were covered with the chariots of angels. Hallelujah. Then he was encouraged. Saints. God is on our side. God is on our side. He's on our side. He's not up there telling lies. God is faithful. I promised. Who also shall do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is faithful. I'll tell you something I want you to ponder on ponder on it I want you to think about what I'm saying God says they're old settled spirits 
their old settled spirits. They've been around for years. And they've been hindering for years. That's what he said. And I said, God, what are some of those old settled spirits? And one he said they were a religious spirit. Secondly, he said, rebellious spirits. Thirdly, he said, spirits of bitterness. Oh, seven demons. Don't want to be moved. I want you to ponder what I'm saying. Because we're fasting and praying, it's going to agitate the life out of those devils. But don't you be moved. Understand? What God is saying and doing. They got to be uprooted. And they got to come out. For the work of God to go forward. I told the devil. Devil. One thing I'm sure about. God is with me. Hallelujah. I believe that. Thank God I ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. Isn't that right? God is a good God. It's a good Savior. And the day will come when those old settled demons are going to be cast out. God said spirits of rebellion. They came in many times through the childhood when people rebelled against some parent guardian they moved in and they've been there ever since they're old and settled they rebel against authority because they're there to hinder what God wants to do but I got news for them God's bigger than rebellious spirits And if they're frustrating you, just know that their time is short and they understand it. Yeah. One of the things I discovered about demons is when you're about to get delivered, Satan will move, he'll try to move you. Because yeah. he don't want you to get it. Okay. He's a wicked soul. But I want you to know that God is for you. God is for you. He is for you. He is for you. God is for you. God is for you. Jesus died for you and I. He is for you and I. Hallelujah. You can bank on it. Take it to the bank. Hallelujah. He's for you. He's on your side. Hallelujah. He's on your side. If he would let the Satan have his way. He'd rip us to threads in no time. But God won't allow him to do that. God won't allow him to do that. Hallelujah. You know, we ought to praise God. We ought to give thanks to God. We ought to give thanks to the God of heaven. For it is in mercy that is keeping us from ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to the Lord more about those old settled demons. Man went to Richmond years ago trying to do a work. And he was so discouraged after many years. And then he came to a conference, a ministerial conference, and the man of God didn't know nothing about him. But he prophesied and told him, he said, there is old settled spirits, lethargic spirits. They don't want to be moved tough so you got to pray and fast isn't that right but God to uproot those devils isn't that right some of y'all don't know where I'm coming from but I ain't getting too deep in I just want you to know that there are spirits that's been there for years that would interfere with the genuine work And you may 
find yourself fighting any of some one or two of those, I don't know. But just be aware that God is ready to begin to deliver us from those powers. They hinder. They hinder. You know what it is to, to know what God is saying and still don't do it? You, you know what I'm saying? What do you think that is? Somewhere an unseen force and power is interfering so that you cannot do the will of God. But don't worry. God's got our interests at heart. And he's a great God. My God, he's a great God. I want to end this by saying they ain't nobody like God. You can have him as a friend. You got a friend. You got a friend. He'll be with you. He'll teach you how to live. Teach you how to walk. Teach you how to forgive. Teach you how to stand. Teach you how to walk in love. Teach you how to walk in holiness. And teach you what we need to do. Hallelujah. He's a good God. I want to encourage you in the Lord. These are days where we got to know who we're all about. And stand. 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 God is with us. God is with us. I want to encourage the body of Christ. Hold your head up. Hold your head up. Don't let your hand, head hang down like there's no hope. God is on your side. God is on your side. Through God we shall do valiantly. For he it is that tramples down our enemies. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. David said in a time of trouble he will hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He set my feet up on a rock to stay. And establish my goings. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Satan is not the lion. He's not the lion. He just roars as the lion. He's not the lion. Jesus is the lion. Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's the biggest and the baddest thing there is. Ah, oh my God, I want to boast on him. I in him. He's good. <clears throat> he's a good God, saints. Stay with him. Give him your best. Don't give him second and third hand stuff. Give him your best. Give him your best. If you were going and striving for excellence in this world, you'd give it your best. Then give God your best. My heart bleeds when I see people that are gifted and talented and sing so well. They give their best years and their strongest years to glorify the enemy. And then where they get where their voice is all trembling, halfway messed up, then they turn to God. It is so unfair to God that gives the gifts. I promise God, my God, what you gave me, I want to do my best. Hallelujah, I want to do my best for God. I want to do my best for God. He deserves it. He doesn't deserve my bad attitude 365 days a year. He, he doesn't deserve that. He's done me no wrong. He's done me nothing want you to know that he's good. I'm concluding now. Father, I thank you. And I give you praise. I give you glory. 
Strengthen your people by your power, Lord. We honor you, Lord God, because you've been so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, that those that sell their soul to the devil, but these are here, Lord, they've given their lives to you. Give them the strength to do the best for God and to yield to him with their whole hearts. Give us all that strength. Give us all that strength of will to obey you, Father, with our whole hearts. You deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. Ah, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You deserve the praise. And I thank you, Lord. You've been so good to us. Could have been dead and gone. Buried and in my grave. But the Lord made death. Stand back and behave. Bless your people, Lord. Strengthen every believer in this place. Take the words that have been spoken. Let it be a blessing to someone today. I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name, strengthen the weak knees. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to God. Glory to your name. Have your way now. I'll give your name the glory. You've been very good and gracious. <laughs>